All right, I want to spend some time talking about removable discontinuity. And uh, this is going to be crucial to you having a really good understanding of AP calculus. So let's take a look at this. We have this function f of x, and we say that it's equal to x squared minus 25 over x plus 5. And I started working on this before I saw it, before I started this video. I was like, you know what? I bet people would think this would look like a quadratic. Right? This would, might, maybe this would look like this, and it has some kind of minimum down here at x is equal to, I'm sorry, at uh, y is equal to negative 25. Maybe it looks like this. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. So what does this look like? Well, the first thing I did was this. I started to look at this, and I'm like, okay, I have this f of x here. And say f of x is equal to x squared minus 25. Well, I recognize this as difference of squares, didn't you? So as difference of squares, this can be rewritten as x minus 5 times x plus 5, can't it? All over x plus 5. Now, here's where something good happens, but we have to be a little bit careful. Hopefully, you can see this, that the x plus 5s can factor out, right? So, given that they can factor out, isn't it true that our function really is f of x is equal to x minus 5, right? So, this is kind of cool. I'm like, okay, that works. So this is obviously a line, right? And it's going to look, I don't know, like maybe like, I don't know, something like that. Well, that's true. But in calculus, we have this problem here. And I think that the problem occurs. Well, let's look at where the problem occurs. Where do you think the problem is going to occur? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to graph this. So, okay. So this, I'm on a uh, TI Inspire CAS CX. So hopefully you have something like that. So I put this in. I hit Control Division. I put in X squared minus 5 over x plus 5. I graphed it. What in the hell? Oh, you see what I did there? Oh, yeah. All right, no problem. You can fix that. Start to think maybe I had some kind of problem more serious than the one I already know I have. I want this to be 25. Right? So enter. Okay, so here's this function. So it seems to me like everything is okay here, doesn't it? But we removed a discontinuity, right? Let's look back here. We removed this discontinuity right here. We removed this one. And there was a problem here. So we needed to notate and say, you know what? There's a hole at x equals negative 5. There's a hole, literally, in the function. There's a place in the function that has no x, has no height value because it can't because it goes to undefined there. And I can prove that to you using the calculator. So I'm going to go back to the calculator here. I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to go to number 7. And number 7. And I'm going to choose this split screen. And it says right here, let's go to x is equal to negative 5. So I'm just going to take my calculator. I'm just going to go up with my cursor. And x equals negative 5. Undefined. Because even though the calculator is graphing x minus 5, it knows that the original function was this one. And if we have negative 5 here, well, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. And remember that 0 in the denominator always comes back as undefined. So, removable discontinuity. If you're going to remove the discontinuity, you have to make a note of it and say, there is this discontinuity at x is equal to, in this case, negative 5. So, your professor will be looking for that. Your AP reader will be looking for that in... Hell, I'll be, looking, I'll be looking for it too. So, okay, I hope this video was really helpful. The next one I'm going to go to is non-removable discontinuities, and we'll talk about why they look the way they look. All right, you guys, good work. Oh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, and your comments, of course, are always welcome.